Hello everybody, uh, this is just a quick little introdu introduction to say congratulations to uh, Prince Harry and um, Meghan Markle who of course got engaged earlier this week um, so yeah, I just wanted to say congratulations to that um, obviously a bit more information has been revealed like it's going to happen sometime in May 2018 at St George's Chapel in Windsor so that's very cool, so that's a bit of a bit of a difference of what happened with uh, Prince uh, William and um, um, the Duchess of Cambridge. So yeah, that's um, that's quite cool. Near the time, I will may most likely probably do a speculation video of what. Um, yeah, so um, I just want to say congratulations to both of them and to say as a humble. Um, person who lives over here in England and is a bit of a fan of the royal family just wanted to say um, welcome to Meghan Markle and say best of luck for her and Prince Harry's future together as man and wife and I hope that um, everyone in the country will welcome her into um, her new home over here in the UK and welcome her into our royal family and I hope you enjoy this video Hello and welcome to this a Act Thomas video. Now this week we are going to be doing a Royal Fact and Date video and uh, today we are going to be talking about Queen Victoria's mother, uh, Victoria Duchess of Kent. Now uh, this lady was born in a place called Coburg in uh, Germany. Her name was Maria Louisa Victoria. Born on the 17th of August 17... 1786 in Coburg to her parents um, Francis and um, Augusta the Duke and Duchess of um, Saxe Coburg Surfield Surfield I think that's how you pronounce it and over the years of their marriage they had a number of children they had um, Sophie, Sophie um, Antoine, Antoinette, um, Julia, Julian, I think, Julian, then a stillborn child, then Ernest, then Frederick, then Victoria. Then, then there was someone else. Then there was Leopold, and then there was another one. I can't remember their names. But um, they were all brought up in the castle that they lived in. Now, um, when all of these children were living together, it was quite rough for all of the children with their parents and their servants in this one place. It's um, not a particularly big castle that they lived in, so it was a bit of a squeeze and as they got older and got married off, things got a little bit better, but things weren't always so wonderful. Now, Victoria um, met, well, she had an arranged marriage with one of her cousins. She became second wife of her cousin um, Ernest Carl and they got married on the 21st of December uh, 1803 in Coburg and it wasn't a particularly wonderful marriage in that case it really wasn't it was quite nothing really massively happened it was quite a quiet um, marriage in that in in that case, and they didn't really nothing nothing particularly um, like eventful happened apart from the fact that they had two children, and um, just generally kind of like things just carried on ticketing over, 
and just day, day to day everything seemed to run relatively smoothly there was no massive big revolts or anything like that um, and generally life was very good for Victoria and her small little family um, her children were her two children were Prince Carl and Princess uh, Friador and they like I said live quite a happy nice little life now um, now in 1814 her husband Ernest Carl died and um, her son Prince Carl then became the uh, leader and the head of this small principality that they lived in obviously being a very young child um, he needed a regency and his mother stepped up to the plate and um, became her son's regent for a few years until she met with another one of her cousins the um, Prince Edward the Duke of Kent from Britain and they got married in 1818 and Victoria and Carl and Friador went over to Britain. Now, um, they got married and the initial idea was um, that the family would return back to um, Victoria's um, principality where she was regent to rule over there until um, things you know uh, everything smoothed out when the um, accession of the British throne had been sorted out at that point it was pretty ropey so they went back and they were living over there quite happily then Victoria fell pregnant and as um, rules back then stated that anyone that should who would be in the British um, bloodline should probably be born in Britain if they were going to potentially be sitting on the on the throne. The um, her father, Prince Edward, and his wife Victoria decided to leave Germany and travel over to back over to Britain, and they did. And the initial plan was going to be that um, when after um, the baby was born, she would pre be presented to her grandfather, the King, George III, and the other members of the British royal family. And then the family would be able to go back over to Germany to live a um, far quieter and far cheaper life than they would be able to over here in the UK. Now, um, in... 1820 the year that Victoria was born a few months later Victoria's father dies and um, Vic um, Victoria is distraught she really is she's absolutely distraught and um, she is terribly terribly distraught by this like I say and really this is where the big problem started because um, a about three or four days later after her husband's death, Victoria's father-in-law, um, King George III, dies as well. Now, um, she had some sort of an ally in George III. So, her, her brother-in-law, King George IV, came onto the throne. Now, George IV did not like Victoria. Um, she, she, she would. He accepted her in um, relation to the fact that she was the brother. No, she, she. Yes, she was the sister of the man that his eldest daughter, his only daughter, Princess Charlotte of Wales, had married. So, she, of course, she married um, Prince Leopold. Now. Over the period of time, 
she then started creating her own household over here in England because um, she, her initial idea was to move back to Germany, back to the Principality and to um, just carry on living over there because things were very unlikely to um, go her way and become um, the mother of the Queen. But a very cunning man in her service, who was also in her husband's service before he died, was um, Sir John Connery. Now, Sir John Connery was a man that had an awful amount of influence over women that he met. He um, was able to persuade them into doing things that they may not always have necessarily wanted to do. Um, now, um, over over time he persuaded her to stay over here in the UK and to make sure if Victor uh, her, her daughter Princess Victoria of Kent became Queen she would need a vising she would may even possibly even need a regency and she would also need to have strong foundations to be brought up by. Now, the Duchess of Kent's other two children were relatively well brought up. Um, they were brought up very well in um, German, you know, kind of in relation to German culture, they were brought up very well. But Victoria, was always a possibility that Victoria may become Queen, so she would need something a lot more stricter. And Sir John and uh, the Duchess certainly believed that they could do this. Now, this is where the influence of Sir John becomes very clear. Because instead of her just being the controller of um, Victoria, the Duchess of Kent's household, she became almost private secretary, personal confidant, and just general being everywhere with her sort of person was Sir John. Now, over the years, um, servants came and went and they always suggested that there was something a little bit peculiar about the relationship between Sir John and um, Victoria, the Duchess of Kent, because whatever he said, she seemed to go along with. And over the years, like I say, the influence of, her, of that became stronger and stronger and stronger until the entirety of the Kensington system which was basically what he designed as a how to make the perfect puppet which he wanted because he thought if it, if um, the Princess Victoria became the Queen he would be able to control her like a puppet from behind the scenes and make her do what he wanted. Um, so what then ended up happening was that, um, like I say, over the years, everything seemed to be getting stronger and stronger and stronger until Victoria got older. Now, after 10 years of um, King George IV and basically sort of having a few run-ins with certain members of the royal family, he dies, leaving no heirs and his brother, Prince William, become um of the duke of clarence becomes king and he becomes king william the fourth now william the fourth really 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 did not like uh, victoria the duchess of kent and he tried everything he possibly could he tried to um get her removed from court he even tried to get her removed from england um she really disliked him she really disliked his wife he really, he really disliked um, King William's illegitimate children, who became, who were um, known as the Fitzclarences, and everything basically over the years were kind of bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling, and, bubbling. and uh, it became to a head when um, at a dinner dinner party, um, someone basically said, "You don't look well, Your Majesty." And um, Sir John was supposedly heard later on by saying, 
if he if he dies if he dies soon, that means Victoria will need a, re a regency. And it, from that point onwards, it became very clear that um, King William was not going to. Um, if he could, he would like to live until Victoria gets of age, so she would no longer need a regency, so she would be queen in her own right, being able to do everything that she wanted to do herself. Now, once Princess Victoria um, of Kent became of age, William, a few months later, did pass away in Windsor Castle. And that, uh, that next morning, riders arrived to give the new Queen, Queen Victoria, the news. The Duchess of Kent was informed afterwards. She was absolutely livid but about the fact that she was not informed straight away. Sir John Conroy was absolutely miffed because he wasn't informed straight away and their plan of action jumped straight into um, into what was going to happen which was that they were going to start controlling the new Queen. But Victoria being um, very much like her mother in that respect was not having any of it. She had spent many many years uh, dealing with her her mother and Sir John telling her what to do, so she was going to be like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, I mean, I'm the Queen now. And as soon as this happened, she started changing, um, her daughter started changing things around. She no longer wanted Sir John around. She no longer wanted her mother around. And this started a very difficult time for the Duchess of Kent and Sir John, in respect that the Queen did not want anything to do with them. But they carried on trying to get involved and trying to make little suggestions, and the um, and so the Duchess moved further and further away from um, importance. And over the, over a period of time, she did start considering going back to Germany, being back with her children, her other children over in Germany. But um, Sir John was very um, strong on the point that. She may not need you now, but at some point or other she will. And then the suggestion of her daughter's marriage came up. And um, the, um, her getting married to another one of her nephews, Prince Albert of saxe coburg Gotha. And Victoria, the Duchess of Kent, started to believe that she would... Um, this may start a, a new relationship for them because she would be able to go in and have a a relationship that would be more of a, a kindly grandmother to the to to any children that may come to this wedding to, from this union. Um, Albert and Victoria, of course, did have a number of children over the years, and when the first grandchild grandchild um, the princess. Victoria, uh, the Princess Royal, arrived. The Duchess of Kent was open, was welcomed back into the um, the family of Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, with open arms, and she became a um, a relied on member of the family as kind of help for the new mother to um, with all the children, and that be and that was a greater relationship that they than they ever had beforehand. And um, some people say that because of that point, um, Sir John had, Sir John Conroy had left um, royal service and he had left the capital and everything like that. So he no longer had um, the Duchess of Kent no longer had his influence over her. So she actually became a lot warmer towards her daughter, and the, and Queen Victoria became a lot warmer to her mother in that because there was no longer that man who was trying to almost orchestrate what was going to always happen. Then of course obviously um, the Duchess of Kent became ill and she um, started becoming more and more um, uh, housebound and um, bedbound until she finally became um, far too ill. So yes, um, the Duchess of Kent died on the 16th of March 1861 in her um, palace at Frogmore 
and this had a very big effect on her daughter Queen Victoria because Queen Victoria had become very reliant on her mother with the children and everything like that and she, um, she had a great relationship once the children started being born between her and her mother and that is um, almost a great shame that that sort of thing happened because you often wonder if the relationship had been better when um, Queen Victoria had been a, was a girl and Sir John Conroy wasn't around that maybe the relationship would have been better and there would have been a, cl a better closeness of that relationship and a, clo a closer um, mother-daughter dynamic and maybe even then um, Queen Victoria would have allowed her mother to be a bit more involved in the early reign that um, for the um, until Prince Albert arrived on the scene. Now I hope this video has been informative for you if so please um, leave a like or a subscribe um, if you'd like to become one of my patrons please follow the um, patron link down below I hope you um, all, like I said, I hope you've all enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.